we are live. Just checking the sound. Making sure people can hear me. Hi Jess, okay. Just making sure we had sound there. Um, first of all, this is a special impromptu version of the Conception Arts today. Um, just want to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land upon which we reside and create on the dark and young people of the Central Coast area of New South Wales and pay respects to their elders past and present as well as the living culture of present Aboriginal First Nation peoples from which future elders will one day emerge. Um, so this week we won't be having a classic uh, conceptionals episode as you all have experienced it in the past. Um, I did want to try and organise a guest to come on, but um, as one of my friends who runs an Indigenous business did tell me, uh, this is like Black Christmas. So everyone's really busy <laughs> for NAIDOC week. Um, so what I thought I would do is use this platform just to highlight a couple of uh, businesses, artists, things, uh, initiatives, I guess, that... Um, you possibly might want to follow or find out more about or starting points to follow um, in lieu of watching an episode of The Conception Arts this week. Um, so what I'm going to do, we'll just come back to it. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> here we are. What I'm going to do is actually share my screen and just go through a few of uh, the websites, etc. I've got going on. So bear with me one second. Okay, shut this down. Excuse my face there. Oh, you just you just saw behind the scenes of the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so bear with me with the internet here. Live live sharing does take a little while to initiate, so I'm just going to make sure that you can all see the screen. Um, first of all, uh, NAIDOC week. Now, um, NAIDOC week is our national week for recognising Aboriginal and Indigenous um, peoples, their custodianship of the land, ownership of the land that we live on. They've never been formally recognised by our government. Um, and so usually this happens in July, but due to the effects of COVID shutting down most of the country. It was moved to November, to this week in November. So it started on Sunday and runs through the week. Um, first of all, I wanted to show you all the NAIDOC website. So this is a great place to find out more if it's something that you didn't, maybe didn't know much about, uh, would like to find out more information. Every year we have a theme for NAIDOC week and the 2020 theme is always was, always will be. Uh, which is a well-known phrase that you might have heard at protests or um, even at any Indigenous events, and it stands for always was, always will be Aboriginal land that we live on. Uh, despite the acknowledgement or lack of acknowledgement from governments and governing bodies and people who build here and people who live here, the truth is, is that it always was, will, always will be. It recognises the First Nations people that have occupied and cared for this continent over 65,000 years. Um, so the nadoc.org.au website is a great place to come and get resources. Uh, you can access the poster to put up in your business if you're not Indigenous. Um, it would be really great to show that representation and, you know, and learn a little bit more about your own Indigenous roots. I also really encourage people to jump on Google, find out who the traditional custodians of the land you live on are, um, I was lucky enough to learn from a dear friend of mine who is also an artist, author and creator and educator uh, how to properly acknowledge the country I live and get to create on. And I will be getting to her in just a moment. Um, so that's the first page I'd like to highlight for you all. The second page is a very, very close friend of mine. Uh, she's a small business creator. Uh, she lives in the Melbourne area. Her name is her shop's name is Liminal Place. She has a small Etsy shop. She can also be found on at liminal.place on uh, Instagram. 
she is what I would term a bone witch. Um, she consciously sources and handcrafts magic products using bones and remains. Uh, what's really cool about Kim's work is that um, she will reconstruct skeletal remains. She cleans them. She goes through a whole process of uh, ritualistically moving on the spirit of that animal and then paying proper attention to its remains so that they can then be used in magical practice. So uh, magical practice being for, uh, you know, most often what people would call witchcraft, bone casting kids. You don't have to be a witch though to appreciate the work she does. Um, bone casting kits are a way of divining using bones and animal remains and shells. It's a very, very, very old custom. Both of our indigenous people here and a few cultures overseas. Um, she also makes these amazing organic smudge sticks, one of which I actually own a few of them, uh, using paper bark and lemon tea tree and a lot of our native plants here to Australia. They smell amazing and they're super good for, it's a uh, super good sustainable alternative for uh, cleansing your own space and clearing uh, whether it's sacred space or just your home of you know uh, latent energies that you might want to clear so please check her out she's on etsy.com forward slash au forward slash shop forward slash liminal place with the capital l and a capital p um, and she's on at liminal dot place on instagram and i think you can also find her on facebook good afternoon aiden and hi, Laura. Oh, Laura, of all people, I'm just going through a few businesses uh, for NADOP week to highlight. We won't be having an episode this week, but I thought what I could do to use this platform is to highlight a few people. And guess who's next? Laura Bowen. <laughs> so you tuned in just in time. <laughs> um, okay, so I did mention before that I was lucky enough to learn how to properly acknowledge the country that I'm on from a dear friend who was an artist, author and educator. And that person is Laura Bowen. Uh, Laura is well known as an author of her um, of her cards, of her uh, divination cards, the oracle cards, the saltwater oracle, um, and formerly the and the Dreamtime cards, which were formerly also self published as the Southern Cross Oracle. Um, as well as this, she's now moved on to both producing handcrafted. Uh, products like her beeswax candles which are divine if you're into that and if you're into candles get some like dorigo pepper and uh, things like that they're amazing and also selling her artworks online at the moment she's very put a lot of uh, blood sweat and tears into them and um it's, I, I would, I, as someone who believes in her work, would really appreciate you showing her some love and going to buy yourself an original piece of her artwork, um, you know, and, and having that in your home. She is a well-known practic practitioner of magic amongst magic circles. Um, you will be buying a piece of magic for yourself. The great thing about Laura is she's now moved into the education space and has a couple of courses running right now which include, I've done two of those courses. Um, so how to that what we're doing right now is how to create your own Oracle deck, the next course beginning at the end of the month. I think there's one or two places left in that course, if I remember correctly. Um, and she takes you through the process of how to create your own Oracle, including self-publishing, crowdfunding, things like that. It's a really good course. Laura puts so much of her time and energy into being available for us. Uh, the other course that I wanna highlight, which I think begins next week, I am not sure if there are places left, but it might be worth checking, uh, is the nature reading using nature as an Oracle course. This is the course that allowed me to reconnect with nature and make me more aware of what my natural environment was saying to me because it does speak to us here. We've lost a bit of that connection and it's a really good way to reconnect with that. Um, now, the good thing about these courses is that they're, they're open to anyone in Australia who wants to learn. Uh, it will be the last time they are run as they stand now. So it is and at this price and in that format. So it really is worth uh, getting onto those. If it's something that you're interested in, I really recommend it. Laura is a lovely person. She will count you amongst her friends just by being your educator. And she has a wealth of knowledge and um, holds amazing space for creative people and people who want to reestablish that connection to their biosphere and the land that they live on. 
So that's laurabowen.com.au and her school is under the Spirit Wakes Academy. Um, so she's a great one. Nature reading course is only half full. There we go. So there's still places in nature reading course. Look, this course, I'm a disabled person who doesn't get out very much. And this course has allowed me to reconnect with nature. Um, I'm able to read the signs in nature for myself and have used nature as an oracle and also to learn a lot more about where I live and the traditional history of it, who the landowners were. As I mentioned before, it allowed me to learn how to properly acknowledge the land and country I live and create on. Um, about the natural history around here, the history of the indigenous peoples of the Darkenjung area in which I reside, um, and also learn more about a culture that's one of the only living cultures, I think it's the only living culture still existing on the planet, um, and the oldest living culture existing on the planet. So uh, it's a, she's a wonderful, Laura herself is a wonderful resource for learning from. So 10 places left in that nature reading course for anyone who's interested in that. Um, now, the next business I did want to highlight is a dear friend of mine, Amanda, who, oh, Laura also was on episode five of the Conception Orts. So if you want to find out more about her and hear it straight from uh, her perspective, she has been on one of our previous episodes. Um, the next person I did want to highlight is my friend Amanda, who owns the shop Wax Treasures Feathers. Uh, she is a proud Ewan woman who also works with, um, natural products from our environment and her biosphere and puts together materials and ingredients in an ethical way and um, to make jewelry, divination tools. She provides fossils, gift packs. Here we go, spiritual decor. She's got a really beautiful, look at these. These are my favorite, um, her uh, echidna spike earrings and smudge fans and things like that. Um, if you are someone who would like to have more ethically sourced products in your sacred space or as part of your home and lifestyle. Um, Wax Treasures Feathers is, it had, does beautiful work and you'd be supporting uh, an indigenous owned and operated business. So uh, Wax Treasures Feathers, she's at waxtreasuresfeathers.com.au and also on Instagram as well. Uh, so next we have one of my favorite clothing labels, Indigenous clothing labels, which is clothingthegap.com.au, um, owned by Laura Thompson. Um, she, Clothing the Gap are amazing. They're actually leading the fight and petition for Free the Flag, which some of you may be aware of, that um, the copyright to the Aboriginal flag was sold uh, some time ago. There was a bit of, you know, basically, long story short, that copyright now means that Indigenous businesses themselves uh, are fought when they use the image of the Aboriginal flag, which is a sacred flag to all Indigenous peoples. There are many tribes um, amongst our Indigenous people. They're not just one tribe. And so to have, to be restricted to using your own sacred image in clothing and in art um, and to support yourself and your life is... It's actually kind of disgusting that they're not able to. And so they're leading a campaign called Free the Flag, uh, which is amazing. It's looking to make that, make make those resources available so that not they're not receiving cease and desist orders for representing their nation uh, as a whole, as the whole continent uh, on clothing, on items. And they make some really, really cool clothes. Uh, my always was, always will be beanie. I wish I had it. It's actually too hot to be wearing it right now. But um, is one of the coolest things I've ever owned. It is literally my favorite be beanie. Um, so please check them out. They do a lot for um, Indigenous businesses and uh, for, for normalizing the conversation around what is actually the theme this year, which is always was, always will be. Um, yeah. So check them out, clothingthegap.com.au. They also have a lot of information on the site. Uh, Laura is, second Laura, Laura Thompson is um, a really good resource. She's on Instagram. She's really open. She'll have a conversation with you. Send her your questions or a DM if you're not sure. I suggest you go through the website first. A lot of those questions are actually answered for you. Uh, 
So let's just remember as non-Indigenous people that it is not up to Indigenous people to educate us. There are plenty of resources out there, everybody. It's not hard to do a little bit of research and find out. And most of, most of your friends who are Indigenous will be happy to confirm information, but it really is on us to do the work and the research and like not be lazy and really educate yourself because this is the culture of the land that we get to live on. And um, if our government's not going to move to recognise our First Nations people properly, it's up to us, I think, to normalise that. So um, the next person I'd like to highlight is Bala Luke, who is, has become quite a well-known, uh, I guess, influencer uh, on Instagram, Luke Curry Richardson. Uh, he's an independent artist. He makes a lot of media. At the moment, the reason I really, really want to highlight him is that at the moment he has a Feed the Family project going on. Let's see if we can get this to play here. Mob Baha Luke here. Today is Friday. Man, like you don't know what today. Actually, I better not because I don't have his permission to play his videos. What I'd like you to do is actually go to Instagram.com forward slash Bala Luke, B-A-L-A-L-U-K-E, and please check out his videos. He has a new project going on called the Feeder Family Project, which is in the Aurora Nation, which is the Sydney area, uh, where he's wanting influencers and internet personalities to jump on, uh, help, help bring awareness to this issue and feed families that need it. Uh, so at the moment, I know he has two $250 um, gift cards, that he's looking to pass on to some families that might need it in the Sydney area. area. So um, please check him out. He's doing this work. He's gotten himself an agent and he's had said himself that uh, any media he creates, he's not doing this to make money. He actually just wants to help community and he's a great voice for the indigenous community in the Sydney uh, area region. And he's also quite entertaining and worth checking out. Um, so please, please, give him some of your love not that he needs it look at these numbers um but you know we always we always want to highlight people who are doing good work and he really is doing some good work out there um so next i actually had an episode of the conception that's where we spoke about this issue or we touched on this issue um you've probably heard about it at some point now and if you haven't i guess good on you for it avoiding all media and responsibility. <laughs> um, no, but the, this is, it is quite a serious issue, issue. So the removal of the Jab Warung director's tree last, I think it's two weeks ago now, but also uh, the Jab Warung fight to preserve their sacred spaces and birthing trees, which has been ongoing for quite a few years now. Um, it's not something that just happened last week. We just had a major event last week happen, but, um, they, the jabwarungembassy.com website is a really good place to uh, go check out and support. They are actually having the Festival of Resistance this weekend, and which is why I wanted to highlight them specifically. Uh, for those of you in Victoria and the Melbourne area, um, if you meet on Jabwarung Country this weekend, 37 Thompson's Road, Amphitheatre uh, for directions and campsite location, um, and that's I believe Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th of November, which is this weekend. So they're having a bit of a gathering, a festival of resistance. It will be a protest event. Uh, be aware of that. They do have directions here on how to remain safe, uh, how to be COVID friendly and COVID safe. Um, so face mask sanitizer, sleeping arrangements to make COVID safe bubble, making sure we social distance. And if you're not feeling well, please stay home. But if you are in the area, that would be a really good way to show your support of um, essentially what is the theme of NADOC week, which is always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Um, so the next place I want to highlight, and I really should have highlighted them first, I guess, but um, is the Deadly Podcasts uh, run by Louis at Deadly Podcasts. Um, they or she is a awesome creator that is highlighting other Indigenous artists uh, initiatives, companies. She actually did an episode a little while back with Laura Thompson from Clothing the Gap about the Free the Flag um, initiative. She highlights uh, different uh, smaller artists and smaller businesses 
Uh, the podcasts come out, I think it's every once a week. They're also available as video live stream podcasts on her Instagram, which is at Deathly Podcasts. Um, yeah, so they're really, I, I really enjoy this podcast. They're worth checking out. As you can see, I've got to catch up on a couple. Um, and yeah, if you could give them a bit of a listen, the, not just this week, but going to the future, I'm sure one a listen to one will make you a fan of the whole show. So uh, do check them out. Uh, next up, I wanted to highlight Jamie from Earth Blended. Uh, James, sorry, from earthblended.com. Uh, Jamie creates, um, she sort of has a dual model to her business. So she creates uh, uh, oil-based natural products. So uh, essential oil rollers, mists, uh, self-care, aromatherapy products. Uh, but she's also an artist. Um, so she creates these beautiful uh, beautiful silhouette artworks with um, Indigenous mothers where she's illustrated. She's got a very, very recognisable style. Um, so it's an exploration of, of womanhood and motherhood through these artworks. She also has uh, a lot of focus on pregnancy and birthing as well as well-being and is a proud, proud artist, uh, Indigenous artist and business owner. Um, and I really, I love everything she does. She's done a few collaborations with a couple of other businesses that I love and follow who are Australian. Um, I really think she deserves your support and her products are beautiful. Uh, she's actually doing an eight days of NADOC uh, promotion at the moment. So day four is 30% off store wide, no code needed today only. Each day it changes for the eight days of NADOC. So uh, please check out her business. That's earthblender.com. Um, so next is Gongara Art, which is Buffy Corona. Um, she is a Nunga woman who is an artist. Um, so the, the Gongara products include, let me just give you a look, um, paintings, earrings, all kinds of things. They're, they're very cool artworks. I love the style. It's in traditional dot style and also uh, really colorful explorations of the Nunga style. So um, this print is beautiful. It's actually one that I'd like to own myself. <laughs> I haven't um, splashed out yet, waiting for payday. Uh, but Gungura Art I also can be found at, at uh, Gungura on Instagram, I believe. So that's gungura.com, G-U-N-G-U-R-R-A.com. Um, so, Next business I'd like to highlight for NADOC week is uh, yalicreative.com.au. Again, uh, well-known artist, human rights advocate, mother. Uh, again, I love the prints that come from Yali Creative. These are just, uh, they were not just, they're not just artists, but these are artists I follow on Instagram. So you can also find her at, I believe it's yali.creative on Instagram. Um, and she has an online shop at yalicreative.com.au uh, and she's got smaller prints available as well as I think you can get cards and things like that as well. So um, yeah, that's Yali Creative. Um, and I think that's it for now. Um, again, I'd like to just highlight that this year's theme is about recognising um, the land that we live, work, sleep, create on as Aboriginal land. So it's really worth jumping online, finding your local land council if you need to ask any questions, find out the history of the area you're in. Um, it, every area has a rich history. It'd be really good if you could find out the name of the owners and traditional custodians of the land you live on here on the Central Coast, it's the Dark and Young people. Um, if you do create or have a business here, popping an acknowledgement of country on a business page, on your Facebook page, at the start of your uh, programs. I, I haven't been, admittedly, haven't been doing it for all my podcasts and it's something I'm going to make a point to do every episode from now on, whether it's an Australian guest or not, because that's the point of this, is always acknowledging that uh, we get to share this beautiful land that doesn't belong to us. Um, it was not Terra Nullis when the first settlers arrived here as 
they tried to claim. And uh, we have a long way to go to acknowledging the people that get to live, create and, and exist. Uh, sorry, the people who traditionally own uh, and exist on this land, our First Nations people. Um, we have many nations across Australia and you could probably learn quite a bit about the area you live in. So jump on Google, find your local land council, find out what the country you live on is, find out what the language of the country you live on is and the people that live there and learn a bit more about the history and, you know, help pay the rent. If you have, um, if you have the means, there's a bunch of uh, charities that you can support. Um, I'm a big supporter of Black Rainbow uh, who are a charity that provide advocacy and services, particularly for LGBTQI plus youth and Indigenous peoples, but also with legal advocacy. Um, there's Sisters Inside, who also provide advocacy for Indigenous women. Um, there's quite a there's quite a few uh, ways that you can help, even if it's not something you can do financially. Just acknowledging where you are goes a long way. So, uh, with that, I will say thank you very much for joining me on this special edition for NADOC week of the Conception Arts. Um, I'll be back next week with another guest. Uh, for now, don't forget, no matter where you are in Australia, that it always will, or always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>